welcome to NBA Talks with SSG2K, and we're gonna get straight into this and break down some NBA trades. So the first one, we're gonna cover all the main key trades that happened ahead of the February 10th deadline. So we'll go one by one, sort of kind of in importance. So the first one that I'm gonna cover is the 76ers have pulled off the trade for James Harden. So the trade consisted of James Harden and Paul Millsap going to the Philadelphia 76ers, and the Nets received Ben Simmons, Drummond, Seth Curry, and two first round picks. So my opinion is both teams have one because, you know, we had a disin disinterested James Harden over at the Nets. And then of course, Philadelphia had pretty much a open roster spot with one player that's just not playing. So they can at least fill in some numbers and the numbers of James Harden is essentially like 20 and 10. And he can probably do a lot more with Daryl Morey and being more comfortable. And I think that was sort of the headline of this trade was both teams and both players have, you know, benefited from the situation, whereas most trades are not en ending up like that. And I think the bigger beneficiary of this trade is the Brooklyn Nets overall as a, a you know, franchise. They have two, you know, first round picks, two really like sound players that they can put around, you know, their main core of Kyrie and KD. And I think they can make a lot more moves over the summer maybe flipping some of these players, maybe flipping some of these picks for, you know, even more role players or even another all-star like caliber talent, possibly a Damian Lillard, two picks, Seth Drummond, possibly some, you know, a young, you know, Cam Thomas for uh, a player of that talent. We could be on the lookout for something like that that just popped into my head because he is going to be someone that could possibly want to move after all the Blazers trades that I'll be covering in this video as well. To more talk on the Philly side, I guess, or I guess I'll cover the full news on the Nets. Um, we don't know how Ben Simmons will kind of play out with the team, but he, he is the prototypical player that they would want. Kyrie is playing the role of, I'm guessing, you know, Steph Curry. KD is playing the role of Klay Thompson. And then Draymond is Ben Simmons. And that's sort of what their outlook is. And then, you know, they have Seth Curry playing, I guess like just a general shooting role and then Drummond is coming in for rebounds like a similar JaVel McGee role. So it's kind of a copycat league of course and we know the Warriors have a really dynastic outlook on how their team is structured and um, I really think that's going to be beneficial for the Nets and then long term as well this is a better trade for them. They got off an asset that was disgruntled. They probably wouldn't have gotten as much as this and somehow they managed to get as much as this as you know, for this trade. I did see some critics um, rating this trade a little bit lower because Seth Curry was involved and not Maxi or Matisse Thybul, which are a little bit more, you know, younger players for the future. But I don't think um, the Nets are really worried about their future right now with Kevin Durant on the team. They're trying to win now. So that's why I think, you know, this is probably the best trade that they could have possibly made and probably an A plus rating. And moving over to the Philly side with James Harden, I really personally think Philadelphia for this season and next season will be really the bigger beneficiaries from this trade because you get an all-star Hall of Fame level talent. And that's not something that the Nets, you know, wanted to lose. And of course, KD was pretty salty about losing that. And they both had kind of committed to each other as friends and homies. They were like, you know, we're going to, you know, do this. But it just didn't work out for them. And that's why I think now for James Harden, he was kind of just, you know, going through the motions. He was not interested with the Kyrie situation and KD being hurt. He was sort of thinking that he's signing up for something different and I can totally get his perspective. So a clear minded James Harden, a clear minded Ben Simmons. And I think he'll fit perfectly alongside um, Philadelphia's system right now. Like they needed a point guard. They had Seth Curry kind of running the show there. And, you know, dr it's a drastic difference coming in with 10 to 11 assists a game and possibly even more than that now with having possibly the well, I'm going to say he's going to be the MVP in Joel Embiid. With the amount of games he's played, I think he's pretty much locked it up in terms of storyline, um, statistics, everything that you can imagine for MVP. He has been the most valuable player, and especially seeding as well. That's really important, and they'll just continue to rise, and that's really what I see for them. And they have a real, real chance to be contenders where before it was like, you know, they'll get to the second round, possibly get bounced because they don't have enough all-star talent. Now you have two realistic all-stars that can really, you know, stuff up the stat, stat sheet. And they also have Tobias Harris as well that can, you know, have some good games here and there. So that's all you really need to get a little lucky in a playoff run and really make it to the championship. So that's sort of my 
personal take on the 76ers. The next team we will be covering is the Mavericks and Wizards trade. This was not as mind-boggling to me as some other trades that happened, but I guess the best way to uh, sum this up, I'm gonna talk on both sides, would be, I'm gonna go on the Wizards side first of this. So Wizards sent out Davis Bertans and also Spencer Dinwiddie, I apologize about my phone, and Spencer Dinwiddie was sent out as well. Spencer Dinwiddie is a similar player. I think this is a common theme for this, you know, trade deadline was a lot of guys being moved because they weren't clear-minded and then also the team wasn't clear-minded on them. So Spencer Dinwiddie is a player that was, you know, not playing in the right system, possibly not, you know, in the right headspace with all the injuries. And I think just a new change of scenery with the Mavericks and sort of the professionalism that the Mavericks have, it'll really be benefit Spencer Dinwiddie coming off a, you know, six man type of role where he's just coming off the bench. There's no pressure. I think there was a little too much pressure put on him being the guy that's right next to Bradley Beal. That's a little too much for a player of his um, caliber, even though his contract is a little bit, you know, different. And also Davis Bertans is, you know, in the similar boat. First couple of years, we saw he was really high in shooting percentage. And I'm the, of the belief, once a guy has a good form, you can't just lose that form. So he was just disinterested, not playing up to his talent, and they kind of quit on him as well in Davis Bertans. So I think with the Mavericks, playing alongside Luca for both of them is gonna be super beneficial because he just provides so much assist and everything else. So I really think that'll be good on the Mavericks side. And then talking on the Wizards sides with Chris Hapsperzingis, um, the main thing that I got out of this was you essentially trade two mediocre talents for a possible better talent that you can um, convince possibly Bradley Beal to resign because he is injured and then you guys you know picked up a talent like this and he is considered a unicorn he's had on and off you know games and he's had on and off seasons with injury so that's sort of his you know problem and it's really gonna be hard to move his contract again I don't believe they can maybe they can do it but it'll be really hard to move off of his contract and also um, one thing to touch back on the Mavericks they actually lose a year off of his contract with the two players that they got. So they'll have one less year of the equivalent of Chris Haps And that's really what they want is less, you know, they want more maneuverability between, you know, their contract situation for um, their all-star in Luca. So they want Luca to be able to have different sets of teammates and really see what works for him and let him have input on who he wants to bring in. But back to the Wizards, their starting lineup would be Bradley Beal at point guard, they would have KCP at shooting guard, Kyle Kuzma at the three at small forward, and then Chris Epps at the four, and they can pick up any kind of you know transitional rebounding big. There's plenty of them in the league. So I think that's sort of what their lineup is in terms of starting. And I really think that's a competitive one moving into the next season once everyone's kind of healthy. So that's really nice for the Wizards. Um, now to cover the next team in this uh, blockbuster trades, I guess. This one's not too much of a blockbuster trade, but I'm still going to cover it. The Celtics acquire Daniel Tice from the Rockets for Dennis Schroeder. This is a win-win for both teams. Um, I'll talk about, I guess, the Celtics side first with Daniel Tice. They really, you know, they're missing leadership in their um, environment, and that's something they can really bring in with Daniel Tice. He knows the system already. He's played there, and I think he's just a great role player that really fits their system. Rockets don't have a system that's, you know, very cohesive, so he doesn't fit them. And he can do a lot of things well, but he can't do one thing great. And the Rockets are looking for guys that can do one thing great at different, different positions. And, you know, they're at different places in terms of how they are as a organization. And then Dennis Schroeder to the Rockets, I think that's a perfect landing spot coming off the bench, helping out the starters that are younger, you know, giving them some advice because he is a professional at the end of the day. Um, I've heard a lot of his interviews. He's really, really helpful. And then of course he's gonna be playing for the bag. He's trying to get his contract. So that's gonna be helpful for the Rockets to, you know, later ship him on for a couple picks possibly. And that's really what I see from the Rockets side because Daniel Tice isn't really meeting mood for any high level picks, but if you, you know, really let Dennis Schroeder ball out, you could possibly get some picks out of it. I think it's a smart move. Um, the next team that we're going to be covering is the Bucks, Pistons, Clippers, and Kings make a four team trade, and I'll be covering that real quick right here. So the Kings received Dante DiVincenzo from Milwaukee, Josh Jackson from Detroit, Trey Lyles from Detroit, Pistons retrieve, or receive Bagley from Sacramento, Clippers receive Rodney Hood from Milwaukee and Semi Ojale from Milwaukee as well. And the Bucks receive Serge Ibaka in this four-team trade from the Clippers. I think this is great 
for all teams involved except for the Kings. The Kings really, really did poorly. I would give them an F to be honest. Um, we'll cover that later on as well. But right here in this trade, we got DiVincenzo, who's a declining asset, came, came off an injury. Um, it doesn't seem he has a high ceiling. Josh, Josh Jackson, I would say about the same. And Trey Lyles as well. I don't really see them as any difference makers or someone that can you know go to the next step personally from watching them. And then Bagley is my guy. I really like him. And I think he was just in a really bad environment in Sacramento. Going to the Pistons, that's really, they have like Sadiq Bey, I think, and then Cade, and then him as a big three, and then you know build a whole bunch of other picks and assets, and then get a couple of young other young talent around them. That's a great you know foundational piece because he's a stretch big. He can defend. He can do all, do everything. So he's a great pickup for the Pistons. I think the Pistons are the biggest winners um, in the long term. And then Clippers got Rodney Hood, Semi Ojale, just to get off their contracts at a later time, most likely over the summer. They'll trade them away. Now to cover the Bucks, who is the second winner of this trade. So Serge Ibaka, two second round picks, go to the Bucks and a little bit of cash. Of course, you know, they're a smaller market team. They'll take cash, they'll take picks. And those picks can be transferred over to role players that can really help, you know, their contentions over the years because Giannis isn't really going anywhere. He signed long term. They have a big three and I think it's fantastic to speak on Serge Ibaka because I am an OKC fan. He can shoot the three. He can defend. He's really high IQ, great locker room, locker room guy. So I think he'll be a great fit. He's filling in a similar role of a PJ Tucker who they lost and I feel like they've been missing, you know, that kind of defense and they haven't really received that and that's why they let DeMarcus Cousins go because they didn't need more offense they have plenty of offense they need a defense and that they shored this up even though his contract is really big and to talk a little bit more about the contract the Clippers get off his contract and that was the biggest thing because they signed so many um, other players and other trades with Robert Covington and Norman Powell those were really big contracts so this really helps them in that sense for both sides and we're going to go ahead and cover the next trade. The Raptors said Goran Dragic to the Spurs for Thaddeus Young. The Raptors are just acquiring as much young talent that's lengthy, that can defend. And they really want to make it hard on teams to, you know, they want to be able to switch all around, you know, the court. And they have a great all-star in Fred Van Vliet. And then they, of course, have Pascal and everyone else around as well that are, you know, really developing. The Raptors are doing fantastic. They're playing sort of like a My League 2K edition of just getting a whole bunch of small forwards and seeing sort of that kind of ideology work out. And the same thing the OKC Thunder is doing as well. As an OKC Thunder fan, we did not make any moves. And just a quick little plug right there. Shout out to Sam Presti. And we're going to go to the next trade. Or I guess I could talk about Goran Dragic. He is um, moved over to... The Spurs, so the Spurs are looking to let him go because they don't really have a use for that kind of guard. They already have DeJounte Murray. The two teams that are looking to get him is the Warriors and the Lakers. So be on the lookout for that. And I'll definitely bring that news if he has moved over there. And then the next team that acquired um, a player was the Suns. Torrey Craig for a second round pick, I believe, from the Pacers. Um, Pacers have no use for older players. They want picks. And then the Suns really would want Torrey Craig back because they already have a you know, plethora of small forwards. They need guys that can stop Giannis, the guys that can stop Kevin Durant, LeBron James, etc. So this is perfect for them. And moving on to the Celtics, the Celtics trade Josh, Richard, Josh Richardson to the Spurs for Derek White. This is another trade that I would consider an A trade. I wouldn't give an A plus because we don't really know how this could work out, but and I'll explain that a little bit further. So Derek White, fantastic trade for the uh, Celtics. I don't think it can get really any better than that. They really needed a third guy um, to replace Marcus Smart, but that can really, you know, stuff up the stat sheet as well on the offensive end. And he's more longer, lengthier, and that helps in closing time. So they have three legit defenders and they're gonna be a really hard team to stop. And then offensively, he brings everything, the passing, the shooting, everything that you can imagine. So he's a great, great pickup. I really love his game. He couldn't play behind DeJounte because it, uh, the Spurs, I believe, have already committed to him. And DeJounte is the correct choice to commit to. Derek White is not any kind of scrub himself. So great move by the Celtics. Josh Richardson to the Spurs. I think he's a great role player, role piece. They're really trying to build that type of environment. So he's going to be great. They can sort of develop his confidence back up because I think that's all he's kind of lacking. He didn't get the correct opportunities with the amount of 
volume of shots Tatum's taking on the Celtics. So that's why he didn't really work out in my personal opinion. But he is a fantastic player since he got traded from the Mavs, now the Celtics. But he's not any kind of you know bad player in terms of fundamentals. I really like his game. The Celtics also meet, move off PJ Dozier and Bobo to the Magic. No big deal, it just cut some costs. Spurs and the Blazers did a three-team trade. I'm gonna go ahead and cover that real quick. So Utah acquired Nikhil Alexander-Walker, who I love his offensive game. I talked about it in the um, specific, specific video that I made just for this th three-team trade. You can check it out at the end of this video or just on my channel in general. And then Hancho Her Hernan Gomez, I really like his game as well. He's a fantastic um, 10 and 10 guy once he's you know motivated and in the right system. And I believe Utah is that right system. And then Alexander Walker, I believe his numbers are gonna get better year over year. He can eventually get to like the 20 point mark and he'll be a great piece to put alongside Mitchell because Mitchell is sort of doing a lot of the ball handling and Alexander Walker can do the ball handling, spot up shooting, um, and then shooting off the uh, dribble as well. I really love his game. I think that's a great trade. And they also get off Joe Ingles, who wasn't going to play this year, and they want to contend this year. So that's really the big you know, move. And then Joe Ingles goes over to Portland. He's a great veteran guy, 3 and D, fits alongside Dame, and he can be a starter, but he doesn't need the, you know, he doesn't need the ball, but he can also have the ball to make plays as well. I love his game. He's a fantastic shooting guard to replace CJ McCollum, and he has great percentages. And he's a good basketball player. A lot of people look at numbers. He's a good basketball player, and that's really important for them. So I, I love that pick, pick up for the Blazers. And then the other team involved was Thomas Sanoreski goes to the Spurs. I talked about the Spurs getting a Josh Richardson role player. Thomas Sanoreski, they can get a lot out of him. I believe I watched him a lot. Um, him and Hernan Gomez um, play, and they play a very good Spurs-like uh, game. So I think that's fantastic. And the next trade that I want to cover this one's I'm this one is the one I have been waiting to cover the Kings give up Halliburton oh my god to get Sabonis I mean this is absolutely ridiculous I don't even know really what to say about this because I don't even know where to begin with the Kings this is why I gave them an F rating in my personal opinion because the Kings you know, lost the previous trade that I talked about, and this one for sure, this is the reason that they have gotten an F. They gave away Tyrese, Buddy, for DeMontis Simonis. Um, that's not the full trade, but that's sort of the outline. And then I know what the King's side perspective is. They don't want to get rid of De'Aaron Fox because he averages more numbers, but you always keep the younger piece that's an elite level talent. And I don't, I don't understand this. And the only thing I can justify on the King's side is that they want a really nice piece that fits alongside De'Aaron Fox that can do a pick and roll game and that really fits uh, De'Aaron's game and they really haven't had that since Boogie left and you know other centers and power forwards and they need a true center and he's a small ball center as well that can you know pick and pop so that's fantastic for them maybe it'll help them out for next year maybe they could build around these guys but he's not a younger piece like Tyrese I would you know I feel like you can draft a guy like this uh, in terms of Sabonis, in my personal opinion. Um, there will be other drafts that they can, you know, they're, gonna, they're not going to be great all the time, so they can, you know, pick up a player. And they also lost Bagley, who plays the same type of basketball as Sabonis. Makes no sense. All right, all right enough about the Kings. I'm going to talk about the Pacers side because the Kings are a wash. Their whole trade deadline was a wash. If you're a Kings fan, good luck to you. Best of luck. Kings on watch right now for real for real so the Pacers they receive a fantastic young piece that they can you know include with their other two guards that they have and then the center as well um, in Miles so you know they can have that Miles Turner can do the pick and roll game with him and you know I think they'll unlock Miles Turner a lot more with getting rid of DeMontis Bonus, who is older piece compared to Miles Turner in my personal opinion and then they also have Chris Duarte Malcolm Brogdon um, so we'll see sort of the <clears throat> maturation of these three guards. They'll probably have to move off one guard, and they also have Buddy Heald. So I'm guessing they'll move off Buddy Heald for some picks. And then possibly, it's going to be hard to move Malcolm Brogdon's contract. But his contract's a great one for the type of value player he is. So I think the Pacers overall are looking really good. I think they can keep all three. That's what they are doing in the Cavalier. They have um, Sexton, Garland, and they just picked up Karis LeVert. So that's sort of where the um, league is kind of going smaller and smaller. So this is a great pickup for the Pacers. And then to talk about the other trade that occurred with CJ McCollum going to the Pelicans and the Blazers doing a trade with them. 
So I'm gonna cover that real quick. So the full trade right here is Josh Hart, Thomas Adonowski, Nikhil Alexander Walker, Didi Lazanda, and a first round pick, and a future second round pick over to the Blazers, and essentially going for, you know, just CJ McCollum. I think that's a decent trade, um, considering they flipped uh, Nikhil Alexander Walker for Joe Ingles. I think that's not looking too bad now, because essentially you're replacing CJ with Joe Ingles. And then you have Josh Hart as well, who's a fantastic, fantastic player. So honestly, not too bad of a trade overall if you look at it in a bigger scheme. And they also got off of Robert Covington, who was going to cost them a lot of money. And also they weren't going to get anything from him. And then Norman Powell was also, you know, gone over to the Clippers in the other trade that they had. So I think overall they've really cleared up, like, I think it was 21 in um, taxes and then 61 in something else I covered in that specific um, trade. But that's sort of the breakdown for them. They're gonna have a great summer. They can really build around Dame and ask Dame, hey, who do you want? And the guys that I'm seeing them go after is Jeremy Grant and DeAndre Ayton. I will say that every time. And then that's not if they lose CJ himself to free agency. Um, that's the kind of the risk they run with getting Josh Hart, Joe Ingles, and just having Anthony Simons and then Dame. That doesn't sound like they have enough. And then we don't know what's gonna happen with the use of Nurkic. So to move on to the next trade, the Pacers send over Levert to the Cavs and for Ricky Rubio, similar kind of players, Ricky Rubio is hurt, you know, and the Cavs are making a playoff push. We've seen this as a trend. A lot of teams are just kind of, you know, putting their um, chips in front of the table and just saying, hey, where will we land? We'll see. So that's sort of what's happening with the Cavaliers. And it's a great trade for them in the future on the Cavalier side. They can have uh, Levert coming off the bench once Sexton returns or remove off Sexton if they really like Levert and possibly pick up you know a different type of player but I don't see that happening I think they're going to keep all three guards personally I would do that he fits their timeline timelines are really important in the NBA and that's what really what I like about this trade and then for the Pacers side they get Ricky Rubio where they can move off you know his contract because they're obviously you know too many guards and that's going to be alleviating, alleviating you know a lot of their like I guess luxury tax or just in general like how much they're accumulating in terms of their team contract situation and then they can pick up dead contracts as well for picks that's sort of what I see for the Pacers moving forward and then that's their main goal so fantastic trade for both teams Clippers acquire Norman Powell and also Covington from the Blazers I believe this is a great trade as well Clippers in the short term win this blazer in the long term we'll see what they do with all the um offloading of the 90 million contract and i think i believe it's a 10 million contract off of um robert covington so i believe this is a great trade for both teams in sort of the directions that they're heading clippers next year are really going to be extremely dangerous with the type of roster they have and they're paying a lot in luxury tax so if they're not winning championships this year they're wasting a lot of money and then next year if they don't win it they probably will move off a lot of these pieces. Um, that's sort of what I see. And the Knicks land Cam Reddish from the Hawks for Knox and a first round pick. Um, since I waited to upload this video, Knicks have not been using Cam Reddish. There have been talks of Cam Reddish being let go in the buyout market, possibly heading to the Lakers or other teams that are making a playoff push. And then the Hawks get Knox not too impressive but they did get a first round pick the hawks kind of fleeced <laughs> in, in my personal opinion i love cam reddish i'm a duke fan as well so I, I still believe in cam reddish just not at the knicks kind of with their coach and their system um i don't think he really fits their timeline overall i guess and sort of what they're kind of doing in the direction they're kind of going and so we'll see how that goes. This has been the full coverage of all the big trades that have happened so far. If you enjoyed this long video, please drop a sub, please drop a like. I, you know, I wanna bring you guys as much NBA news and trades as possible. I drop short form content, long form content. Um, you know, follow me on my socials if you wanna see all that in real time. And I'll see you guys next time and peace.